Hey everyone, uh, Finance Speeds is here at IFX Expo International in sunny Imasol, Cyprus. Uh, I'm joined now by Alexei Kutsenko, who's founder and CEO of Tools for Brokers. Alexei, thanks for joining us today. You're welcome, so it's a pleasure to discuss with you new trends in the industry. Likewise, always a pleasure to see you as well. Um, so I wanted to start off and ask you about FXCM Pro. They were uh, just announced as your latest client. And actually, earlier this year, Tools for Brokers partnered with uh, the company options. Um, uh, I guess my question is, why do liquidity bridge solutions remain a critical feature for FX brokers? Is there no way around liquidity bridges? Yeah, to be honest, there's no way around just because it's like a core part of your business if you're a brokerage company. Because uh, the bridge, like you could think about the bridge like a vessel which bring you uh, like a blood from your heart to other like parts of your body because without it, it's impossible to do anything. So the that's why we're trying to improve solutions we offer with our bridge and we try to connect as much liquidity providers as possible to provide our clients with a range of uh, different assets and uh, exchanges which allow them to offer different uh, options to their clients. So this is a logical step for us to expand presence of the liquidity providers like FX and Pro options and other, other companies. Mm -hmm. And are you sort of in talks with more partners as sort of the year moves along or yeah, like, well? yeah like it's you know it's like a daily process we all the time co in communication with the new companies with new liquidity providers exchanges we try to expand as much as we can because so we, ne we never stop this it's like a process which have no end just because a new companies appear on market new assets because let's say like eight years nobody spoke about crypto now crypto likes it's something we it's it's not even a trend it's Thing that we already happen, it's in our lives. So yeah, sure. so that's why crypto unit and uh, new instruments coming up. So currently, brokers also want to add not only fixing these crypto, but they now start to looking on uh, stock market, equity markets, yep. and etc. So we now starting to look on this area as well to provide different options in the future for our clients because they need to do this kind of stuff. So I, I would say maybe some of this is actually um, some of your partnerships are. Are, are really um, a result of sort of feedback from your customers, potential clients. Yeah, right? yeah. In yeah. most cases, like uh, we do it this way, we, we collect the feedback from the different clients, and when we see like some amount of demand for one type of assets or type one type of liquidity, we come to them and decide how we could integrate them and what conditions and etc. So we do this like that. Great. So tools for brokers has been around for many years, right? And I think you will agree that the market, the marketplace, and and um, sort of brokers' needs have, have changed over the years. I guess, can you tell our viewers uh, what kind of brokers does Tools for Brokers cater to like today, as opposed to you know, uh, many years ago? I think like in general, it's like pretty similar, but depending on the trends of the market. So currently, you know, the, the now, in our industry is more regulated than it was like sure. this. So currently, it's all, most of the brokers are regulated somehow at least so they they more focus it on the risk management system they more focus it on liquidity so they don't just want to buy a platform and start so that's why uh, the common brokers looks very similar but it's more uh, more complex and it's more professional than sure. it was like 10 years ago uh -huh. and now we see like a trend for example uh, of prop trading companies uh, a demand for the prop trading solutions because because it's become a new trend in the industry because it's uh, a new way for attracting clients and many brokerage companies itself they start to create uh, like departments for the prop trading even if not company only pure prop trading but they want to uh, get something new for example like five years ago social trading was the trend now prop trading is something like similar trend we have in the industry sure yeah um, going back to liquidity bridges is it still okay to say MT4, MT5 liquidity bridge because I mean you know today it goes much you know much beyond MT4, MT5. You have C Trader, you have uh, Match Trader, an App Trader as well. Uh, yeah. So do you do you expect to add more trading platforms as we go so along? It, it's the same like with liquidities and exchanges. When we see a demand from the clients, we do this 
And uh, initially, our trade processor was developed in a way when you could easily integrate any trading platform. And depending on the request of our clients, we do it step by step. Now, with the clothing of white labels from MetaCools, uh, demand for new uh, trading platforms for every white label is higher. So we added C Trader, Match Trader. These platforms offer the white label solution for the brokerage company. So uh, it's the same. It's like a constant process, but it's not. We, we add new platforms not so frequently as for liquidity providers, but at the same time, we're always ready to integrate in new platforms. And even I could say that some brokerage companies, they have own trading platforms, and they have, and we have everything to integrate their trading platform and trade processor very easily. Uh, it's minor integration on their side, and they will get full uh, power of the trade processor and all its abilities inside the system after the like, very fast integration. I see, I see. So it's very flexible. Yeah, it's very flexible in terms of connecting to platforms that was built initially. Yes, we, we like we generally call it MT4, MT5 bridge because most of the brokers on MT4, MT5. But of course, when you speak about it, we all the time think that it could be a multi-platform bridge uh -huh. as well. And uh, I think it was one of the uh, like first companies who started to offer like bridge for any kind of the trading platform, not only for MT4, MT5. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Um, so here's a question. How cutting edge are tools for broker solutions for brokers? I mean, you know, we speak about these different trading platforms, these different liquidity providers, connectivity. You have a plethora of all kinds of add-ons and tools that you have in your ecosystem. Could this at some point result in some, like, let's say, compatibility issues with existing systems uh, for brokers, LPs, platforms? Because how do you solve those challenges? Yeah, it's thing that you need to always keep it in mind because like when you integrate one solution into another, you could think like in 95% of cases, everything goes smooth. But in 5% of cases, you need to predict all like any kind of potential situation on different software, different platforms, other plugins. So in our, in, in, in our company, what we do, uh, we test all our solution for compatibility to each other. So we, we in touch uh, with other companies in the industry and we have agreements that we could test our software with, for example, other bridge providers, other software providers. So they give us some demo testing environment and we're able to test it together. So sometimes we provide our software to them for tests with there. So we all together try to make clients happy. So they, if clients want to use one solution for us and another solution for another company, software company so we want to be sure that both of us and me uh, us and other software provider want to be sure that both solution could interact and could work together without any issues because for brokerages it's very you know it's critical thing so they want to be sure that every part of the environment is com compatible with other parts and currently as we discussed because as long as brokers become more professional the environment of the brokerage company becomes more and more complex and it's a lot of like different models implemented to each other. So, uh -huh. so this is one of the things you should keep uh, in mind all of the time. And as long as the TFB is a company which like started as a pure technical company, yep. so uh, we always know how we could achieve these goals just because we have very strong technical team behind. And it's our focus on that is so high that we're trying to like to do our best on this part of it. Awesome. Yes. Um, well, that actually brings me to my next question. You know, uh, the quality of customer support is often a deal breaker for companies that are looking looking for, again, liquidity bridge solutions or whatever it may be that that is um, served sort of from the fintech side. Um, how does Tools for Brokers sort of operate in that department? Obviously, your clients are multilingual. They're in different regions and things like that. So kind of how do you handle customer support? Like, to be honest, uh, our customer support was one of the best things in our company because, like, even if you will, 
will talk to the industry players and many brokers, they will uh, say you that we have one of the best support team ever because like our goal was not to only create a team which like accept your inquiries. Ticket? Yeah, tickets. <laughs> so, so yeah, like all the time we try to understand the demands of the clients, try to understand what they need, how they want to implement it and etc. So our team is not only like a guys who sit in and send you typical answers. All our support teams are engineers. So they all could easily like join uh, your environment, take control of it and see what happened, it was wrong or how it should be configured and all. So uh, it was a long process of education. We have uh, special education courses inside the company for any new employee really? who comes to, for, yes, for support team. Wow. We have uh, like a class, classes for the education which uh, like, and after the classes they have to pass an exam inside our company see, before they before they will be able to communicate with the clients because they have to for sure they need to understand the basic principles of the industry they have to understand how our solution works they have to understand like it from technical point of view that's why our quality of our support is so high mm -hmm. and you are right uh, as long as we work uh, in very different regions we try to cover as much languages as we as, as we can mm -hmm. for example for very big countries India China uh, of course many of them speak on English but we still need to have different uh, employees who speak on different languages and of course in current industry it's impossible to provide support uh, like in, only in a short period so you have to provide it on 24 7 and it's what we are doing now so all, all, all our support teams available 24 7 for any inquiries and there are special guys who will handle everything and uh, even we have a special team who focus it on updates installations on the weekends so this is team who works only weekends and take care of everything related to maintenance which could be done only on, we on weekends so all it's together make our suppers is like top-notch team which yeah. able to handle any task from our clients I think that sounds very cool the, the fact that you said that you know my support team or some people on my support team are engineers so they speak the language that they need to speak yes exactly with the customer instead of um, you know when when we normally think of customer support yes. in our daily lives it's like you said it's it's basically um, you know predetermined messages exactly did you try to reboot <laughs> yes. your device no 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 it's like not this. like that so, <laughs> because like in our company the title it's not a customer support it's customer engineer so uh -huh. we don't we, when we hire people we don't searching for customer support because a lot of people just want to talk to the customer but they not engineers they not like technical guys so they yeah, yeah. try to always find technical guys for this job as well I used to have a, a, a license in the United States to, um, for retail retail Forex so I also had to take an exam at some point yeah. to get that license I guess my question is how hard is the exam that uh, the candidates or employees need to take is it a like, hard test it's more to check the, that they are ready to work with the clients if they don't pass it we just ask them to spend like another week to check some points they are not uh, understand very well so it's like that so it's not hard exam because we still need to hire people and expand the team but uh, it's a way for us to understand that at least a new new person who will communicate with the client skilled enough to not to be like a newbie and not to ask a stupid question to the client yes of course, of course. I guess my last question would be you know if we look at the market dynamics right now just in terms of financial uh, products specifically Forex um, you know we're in a, I would say we're in a period of like subdued volatility which if we if we if we looked at like the same time last year it was a completely different story right yes um, what do you think um, are the sort of the main challenges that our brokers are going to face like towards the end of 2023 and 2024 let's say if the situation does not improve if we continue to see like low volatility in, in your in, uh, in your opinion I think that's why for example prop trading now is one of the trend because it's a source of income for, for the brokerage companies which not uh, based on the amount of trades but based on the entry fees and the sure. participation of the clients so that's why it's one of the trends we see and I think more and more brokers will implement something similar not maybe in the same way but something similar to that so 
because they still need to write their revenue somehow and that flat markets is very difficult to continue this and I think uh, another uh, thing that we will they're going to expand in new regions mm -hmm. for example next year we'll have similar export in Latin America yes. in Mexico so it's a trend that we see even already technical providers so peace and workers will go there that is new market coming mm -hmm. so the same with South Africa it's already was some exports in South Africa and new few of them are coming next year mm -hmm. so I think what workers have to do they need to focus on the new markets and new trends and new ways of uh, uh, in searching for clients and way to hide their revenues in this uh -huh. case yeah great well Alexei thanks for taking the time to speak with yeah. us it's always a pleasure to it's get, a pleasure thank to you for coming to our booth absolutely thank you so much